What's up, interview hackers? Sam here from ByteByBite.com, and in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to hack your interviews using the three pillars of coding interviews. And if you want a ton more content just like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and we'll let you know every time we release new videos. All right, so as I said in this video, I'm gonna show you the three pillars of coding interviews. And what are these three pillars of interview? Well, the three pillars of interviewing is a framework that I've developed to allow you to hack your interviews so that you know what to focus on as you're going through the process. What that means is you're not gonna have to focus on random things. You're not gonna have to focus on grinding lead code problems. You're not gonna have to focus on studying random topics that you have no familiarity with. Rather, you can focus on the right things that are gonna get you the most bang for your buck and get through the interview prep so that you can get back to the rest of your life. Now let's actually dig into what these three pillars are. And so these are the three pillars of interviewing. We have CS fundamentals, we have problem solving strategy, and we have self-confidence. And if you can build these three pillars, you're gonna have everything that you need to be successful in your interviews. And this is really the core of what interview hacking is. This is the core idea, right? It's about figuring out what to focus on as you go through your interview, and go through your interview prep process so that you can focus on the right things and not have to focus on everything. So let's dig in here. The first pillar of interviewing is CS fundamentals. And this is so, so important because this is really the foundation for everything else that you're doing. I want you to imagine for a second if you were gonna go play a sport. Like if you were going to go play a football game and you didn't know how to throw the ball, it would not matter how great your strategy was. It wouldn't matter what kind of plays you were trying to run because you don't actually know how to play the sport. And this is the exact same thing with coding interviews. In coding interviews, we have to have those foundations before we can dig into all this different strategy, before I can show you specific techniques for how to solve the problems. We need to have that baseline fundamental level of the CS, like data structures and algorithms, so that we have that foundation. And now I want to give you a really simple strategy for how you can approach this. And it really just involves two steps. So the first step to studying these technical topics is to actually figure out what specific topics you're going to need to focus on. And to do that, it's really, really easy. All you got to go is pick up your copy of Cracking the Coding Interview if you have it, or go on Amazon and go look in, go to the look inside this book feature. And what you want to look at is you want to look at the table of contents. And if you find that table of contents, it's going to show you the exact topics that you need to focus on. And for each one of those, you can dig in, you can explore, like make sure that you understand the data structures, make sure you understand all that good stuff. Now, step two is to go on Leak Code, and this is really easy if you have a Leak Code Premium subscription, because all you gotta do is you go into each topic area and you're gonna sort by frequency. So for each topic that you wanna study, you're gonna go through that table of contents that we found in Cracking the Coding Interview and maybe say you wanna study arrays and strings, you're gonna go into leak code and go to the arrays section or go to the string section and sort by frequency. This is gonna allow you to see all of the most common problems for that specific topic so you know that when you're studying these problems, you're doing the thing that is gonna give you the most bang for your buck. You're studying those problems that are most likely to come up when you're actually in your interview. And now with these two steps, I just want you to repeat this process. So the simplest formula that you can use for this is on day one, study the topic. So on day one, study arrays. On day one, study graphs. On day one, study whatever it is that you wanna focus on. Then day two, go to Leak Code, sort as we talked about, and find a problem to practice, and just do one practice problem. Then day three, pick another topic. Go into that topic, spend some time studying, and day four, do practice problems. And all you have to do is repeat this process. Just pick a couple of the topics that you're feeling weakest on and go through this framework of just day one study, day two practice, day three study, day four practice. And then after you go through maybe five topics, loop back because you're going to want to go through more than one practice problem. And by doing this, you're going to reinforce these different topic areas. You're going to build that muscle and you're going to nail those CS fundamentals, which is the first pillar of interviewing. And now I want you to let us know down in the comments below, what is the first topic that you're gonna focus on? I'm really curious to hear what it is that you wanna focus on first. Pillar number two is coding interview strategy. And this is also so important. So once we have the fundamentals nailed down, having that strategy is key. Because a lot of times, if we don't have the strategy, we can't actually apply everything that we're learning. 
And so here's an example of a tweet from Max Howell who said that he wasn't able to land the job at Google because he wasn't able to invert a binary tree on the whiteboard. And he's obviously someone who has a lot of skill at programming, but he still wasn't able to make it into the end zone because he didn't practice the CS fundamentals and that interview strategy. So how can you start to be more strategic in your interviews? I wanna give you a really simple tool that I think you'll find super useful. And the idea here is that what you're gonna do is you're gonna focus on what is the how rather than what is the what. So anytime you do a practice problem in your interviews, switch from asking what the solution is to asking how do I actually get to that solution? When you change the question that you're asking here, it really changes the mentality and the mindset around how you approach the problems. Because now, rather than just saying, I wanna understand what the solution is, you're actually engaging your mind and you're starting to think through the process of what, of like, how does this actually work? How do I understand this at a deeper level? And you're starting to be strategic about saying, what is the thought process behind this? rather than just let me understand the solution so that I can regurgitate it in my interview. Because remember, as an interview hacker, the goal is not to just memorize solutions. The goal is to take a better, more strategic approach. And so by doing that, by asking that how question rather than that why question, it's going to allow you to be strategic. It's gonna allow you to understand what is the underlying tool that you're using and how can I apply this in the future when I see this problem or when I see different problems. And you're not just trying to memorize code. You're not just trying to memorize one very specific granular strategy. And finally, the last pillar of coding interviews, which is so, so important and gets completely overlooked, is self-confidence. Because think about it, if you go into the interview and you're not feeling confident, what does that look like? Well, first, you're not necessarily gonna be very engaging, you might be really awkward, you might seem uncomfortable in the interview. And then you're also not gonna feel confident in your ability to solve the problems. And if you're not feeling confident, that makes your mind go blank. That makes you start to worry about whether you're gonna be able to do the problem. And then you start to spiral, right? Because now you're not feeling confident. And so you start doing worse in the interview. Your mind starts going blank, you start sweating. And that makes you in turn feel more anxious, feel less confident. And then feeling less confident makes you perform even worse and it spirals and spirals. So if you can develop self-confidence, this is the third pillar of interviewing because it is so, so, so important. And I wanna give you four tools that you can use to build up that confidence because it's super important that you be able to develop that confidence, especially in that sort of like public speaking communication muscle that is gonna be so valuable in your interviews. So number one is Pramp.com. Pramp.com is a great place where you can do mock interviews that are peer to peer. So it's completely free. If you go to bitebybyte.com slash Pramp, you can actually get unlimited credits at Pramp.com. And so by doing lots of mock interviews, you'll get used to that strategy. You'll get used to how interviewing works and it's gonna make you feel way, way more comfortable in your interviews. Number two is to start practicing public speaking. And a great way to do this is to join Toastmasters. There's so many Toasters, Toastmasters clubs all over the world. And so no matter where you live, chances are that there's a Toastmasters chapter near you that you can join. And this is basically a public speaking club where you're gonna get an opportunity to speak in front of small groups, get an opportunity to put yourself out there, practice formulating your thoughts, both, both in like planned speeches and also in speaking off the cuff, which is super valuable for interviews. And you'll get a ton of feedback as well on how you communicate. That's gonna allow you to do better and get better at this and get more confident as you go along. The third strategy that I would recommend you try out is actually videotaping yourself as you do the interviews, as you do your practice. Right? Because as you're practicing, when you videotape yourself, it adds that little bit of pressure where you don't necessarily have to have someone else watching you, but just the fact that you're videotaping it can make it a little bit more, you know, for lack of a better word, intimidating, which is actually really good for you in this situation because it's going to make it so that you are under a little bit more pressure and you want to perform. And the best part about this is that afterwards, you can go back and actually look at the video and you can see, oh, I did this well and I did this poorly. And so how do I start to improve? Because a lot of times it's not totally obvious when we are in the heat of it, when we're going through the process ourselves, it can be hard to evaluate like, or even notice what you're doing well and what you're doing poorly. So that can be a really cool tool. And finally, the last tool that I would recommend for you, number four, would be to actually go do some interviews. A great strategy you can use is you don't have to schedule your most important interview, the one with the company that you're most excited about, right off the bat. There are lots of companies out there that could be a good fit. So you can schedule interviews that you're less excited about first and actually get out there and do real interviews. 
it's a, such a good way to get that practice because it's the only way that you're really going to know whether you're prepared for your interviews, whether you're you know ready to go out and actually perform, and also at the same time allow you to develop that skill, allow you to develop that practice and that comfort level that's going to benefit you so much in the interviews. And so with that, that's all I got for you today. Just to recap, remember, if you focus on nothing else in your interview prep, focus on the three pillars of interview. Focus on the CS fundamentals, focus on the strategy, and focus on building that confidence. And if you do that, it's gonna be a huge boon for your coding interview prep. And with that, if you haven't already, make sure that you go over to bitebybyte.com slash 50 questions. You'll be able to get a ton of practice problems that are some of the most common practice problems that you'll see in your coding interviews. I walk you through video solutions, step-by-step -step how to solve all those problems. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to our channel because we're releasing tons of new videos just like this. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.